Hello class, this is section 3.6 and in this video we are going to discuss an alternative way to write down Fourier series using complex numbers. So this is the traditional Fourier series, the sum of cosines and sines. We want to exploit something called Euler's formula. It's written as so, the exponential of i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. You might have seen this once or twice in your previous math classes. And the reason that this is useful is that this also allows us to write down cosine and sine in terms of exponential functions. These relationships are tr traditionally written as cosine theta equals ei theta plus e minus i theta over 2, and sine theta as ei theta minus e minus i theta over 2i. To make things a little bit easier on us, we want to simplify the sine expression a little bit. Note that i squared is minus 1, and therefore i equals minus 1 over i, or 1 over i is equal to minus i. We can then rewrite the sine expression in a slightly different way, or in other words, i over 2 e minus i theta minus e i theta. We'll use this one instead together with the regular cosine expression. We can replace the cosine and the sine in our Fourier series expansion with the exponentials, and we get instead this expression for the Fourier expansion. So we just replace the cosine and sine with the corresponding exponential expressions. Uh, some notational discussion. Exp of theta simply means e of theta. This is a short form because we are going to write some really big powers of the exponential. Oops, uh, I need this, this needs to be a plus here instead of a minus because the cosine is e i theta plus e minus i theta, so that's a mistake over there. So now we can collect all the terms that, in terms of exponential. So a naught remains the same, and what's going to happen is that we are going to take one half the sum of n equals 1 infinity. So we're first going to collect all the exponential n pi i x terms. Notice that the second sum here has an i in it, so we need, need to account for that too. And what we get is that when we are just concerned about the n pi i x over l terms, we have an a n from the first sum, and we have a minus i bn from the second sum, there's an i here, remember, and similarly we get a one half n equals one to infinity when we are concerned about the negative exponentials. We have an a n from the first sum but a positive i bn from the second sum. Uh, let me write this down this way. In fact, we can simplify things a little bit more. We can write f hat x equals just the sum from n going from minus infinity to infinity of exponential n pi i x over l with this number cn constant instead. Let's figure out what the constant cn should be. So when n equals 0, what happens? c0, the exponential term here becomes exponential of 0, which is equal to 1. So we need to look at what constant in the Fourier series has no sine or cosine functions, and that's obviously a0. So c0 is going to be equal to a0. Now let's look at n positive. This was the n0 case. And now the n positive case we have cn that corresponds to the positive exponentials, but then our constant is a n minus i b n over 2 for all the positive exponentials. And now let's look at n negative, so c minus n. This are, these are the negative exponentials, and we can see that the corresponding constants are a n plus i b n over 2. So we know exactly what the constant c n are in terms of the a and b. 
But if you may remember, we have all these integral formulas for the a not the a n and the b n, and it would be nice to get something similar like that for the c n as well. It's not too difficult to figure out what the c not expression should be. A not and c not are the same, so we just get c not equals one over two l minus l l minus l f x dx as usual. Now for c n positive c n is equal to half of a n minus i b n and taking the previous formulas we can figure out that this is just going to be 1 over 2 l f x um, we take the cosine from the a n cosine n pi x over l minus i sine and pi x over l dx. Now the astute student might have noticed that this almost looks like the form of Euler's formula over here. So ei theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta, but it's also a negative form. We have e minus i theta equals cosine theta minus i sine theta. Replacing the theta of minus theta, uh, the sine is an odd function, so the minus sine comes out. And using that, we get 1 over 2L integral from minus L to L fx times the exponential of the negative of n pi i x over L dx, simplifying it in that way. Now, notice that these two formulas are consistent. If you set n equals 0 over here, you get exponential of 0, which is 1, and you get the fx by itself, like you do over here. So hopefully, we can get one formula that applies to all three cases. And let's see what happens in a negative case. c minus n is equal to 1 half a n plus i b n. So a similar calculation gets us that this is equal to 1 over 2 l minus l to l fx cosine n pi x over l, this time the plus, plus sine n pi x over l dx. Again, using Euler's formula, we can simplify that term in the right-hand side to exponential, but this time it's just a straight Euler's formula because it's a plus sign over here. So we have n pi i x over l dx. And that is our value for c minus n. But observe that these three formulas can actually be expressed as one thing, one formula. We can rewrite everything as for n going from infinity to minus infinity for every n. We can get cn equals minus l to l, uh, 1 over 2l, let me fix that, fx exponential minus n pi x over l dx. And this fits all three cases. If n is positive, we get exactly the same formula as we did before. If n is negative, we should get a positive exponential, and we do, and we do when that happens, so n negative here, so the negatives cancel out. And when n is zero, we have the exponential term disappearing, so we just get fx. So it's nice that for the complex Fourier series, we get one simple formula to calculate the constant.